Welcome to Chemical Process Safety. This video is an introduction to dispersion models. An accidental release of a hazardous chemical isn't just a problem for employees and workers in the chemical plant. Consider that a released chemical might be airborne and therefore will not be confined to the area that it was released. Furthermore, for many toxicants, a very low concentration is enough to pose a threat to human health and safety. Therefore, the surrounding community is also at risk. The goal of a dispersion model is to estimate the concentration of a released toxicant at a distant location from the release. These models inform decisions, both from the perspective of process design, for example whether more engineering controls should be added, and also the perspective of public safety, for example developing an emergency response plan. Pause the video now to think of as many parameters as you can that should be included in such a dispersion model. To get you started, the most obvious parameter is the quantity or release rate of the material. Clearly, the more chemical that is released, the higher the concentration will be. What other parameters? How about the type of release, meaning the time scale? If the release is instantaneous, and here we'll stretch the meaning of that word to mean up to 10 minutes, the resulting cloud is called a puff. In contrast, if the release is continuous, the cloud is called a plume. Wind speed and direction is another factor, since convection is the primary means of how the toxicant is transported. Interestingly though, fast wind speed isn't necessarily a bad thing. Although it's true that windy conditions will carry a toxicant faster than calm conditions, the increased turbulence of a strong wind can help disperse the toxicant as well. Related to the idea that mixing is generally a good thing, atmospheric stability is another parameter. This means a degree of vertical mixing as a result of temperature gradients. On a calm night, the air close to the ground is cooler than the air higher in the atmosphere. As a result, there is no motion of air upwards and therefore very little turbulence to break up a cloud of hazardous chemical. In contrast, during the day, the sun warms the air close to the ground. This warm air wants to rise, which increases mixing and helps disperse the chemical. Another potential source of mixing is the ground conditions, or the setting of the release. In rural areas, especially those with open water, there are very few obstacles to airflow, besides maybe a few trees. However, in urban settings, the buildings act kind of like baffles to obstruct the flow and increase mixing. So, although a release in a populated area might affect more people, it also might not be as dangerous. The height of the release, visualized here, is yet another parameter. If the release occurs very high, Paradoxically, it is safer to be closer to the release, since it will take some time for the toxicant to diffuse to ground level. Finally, the momentum of the release and the buoyancy of the release chemical might also be factors. Both of these may make the cloud behave as if it were released from a height. Keep in mind that the parameters I've discussed here is not an exhaustive list. Just the ones I know factor into the dispersion models that I'll teach you. It is very possible that other parameters are important as well, and these may be included in other dispersion models. Another thing to remember is that every dispersion model is only an estimate and should be treated as such. When in doubt, practice good process safety thinking and err on the side of caution by assuming the worst case scenario.